So I went and saw Nightcrawler in the theater in, in the fall of 2014, and I recently saw Southpaw, and the same question was on my mind when I left the theater both times, which was, I think this guy might be insane. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said that to me the other day, actually, after the play. I just did this show on Broadway, and that's really, they were like said they were in the cab ride home, like after being like, wow, that was amazing, and then it suddenly dawned on them, and they were like, is he insane? Like, <laughs> he must be crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's, <laughs> it, it's, it's a compliment. And Thanks. It, it's such, both those roles, there's such a major commitment and there's such a, um, you know, a storehouse of power in both those characters mm. in very different ways. You could just see how much you would transform yourself and everything. And, and it got me thinking about work ethic. And, um, you know, and I, I, I had a dad who, really preached a strong work ethic and would not let us get away with anything. <laughs> and, uh, and so, uh, you know, I just wondered about, about your, if you remember the origins of that message or, or if you've always had a strong work ethic or, or if you learned that somewhere. My father is incredibly disciplined, um, like almost prolific in how he, uh, you know, does work. I mean, he, I remember as a boy, like he would be up at, 4.30 in the morning, and he would write. He would, even if it was like writing in his diary or something like that, like he was up, he was constantly sort of always very prepared like that. Um, he, he was a, a, he's a director. But as a boy, I remember that, and, and, and a really hard worker. In fact, ironically, you say that my last name, I think, means something like hard rock or something. There's like a genetic really? thing of, yeah, there's like a genetic connection with like, um, sort of, I guess, hard work. Uh, and then on the opposite side of that, there's like my moms, who were like all Jews, who like immigrants who came in, who like, my grandfather was like a Doogie Hauser. He was like uh, a doctor in residency at 22. Really? Yeah. I think there's part of it in me where I kind of recognize the absurdity of what I'm doing. And the only way that I can move past the absurdity of it is to commit to it in a place where no one can say that it's absurd anymore. You know, absurdity in the sense that you're make you're making us uh, you're like right. and so and 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 I think there's also a belief that I have this crazy not crazy well there's the word again but I have this very strong belief in the unconscious and the idea that like that we spent that it is driving us it's like this massive river that we're floating on and we're sort of unaware obviously sometimes of where we're going I don't think we have much control over it because that brings in the question of like fate, destiny, and free will. But I believe that there's a way in which you can kind of hop onto as a, in performance as an actor, like onto another river a little bit. If you work hard enough, you kind of like move your unconscious into a space. But that takes kind of grinding at the world that you know normally and pushing it into a place that is filled with the molecules of all the things you've collected along the way. Meaning, like my preparation for something like Southpaw was five months around boxers all the time, going to every fight that I could, um, researching the history of what my character had gone through, going to orphanages and, and talking to people in the system and being there and picking up that energy. Like picking it all up and trying to sort of exist in it and then putting that into, after enough time, you know, like I feel like almost like your molecular structure changes a little bit and then you put that onto the screen. I think that translates. Like I think that that translates even to an audience. And so, and I find joy in that process. 